Welcome to the South Texas Spring 2019 Climate Outlook webinar. My name is Tyler Castillo. I'm a meteorologist here at the National Weather Service office in Corpus Christi, Texas. And let's go ahead and get started. So to start things off, let's take a quick look at this past winter. When looking at the mean temperature percentiles, which is the image here on the bottom left, we can see that the majority of the region saw above normal temperatures this past December through February. When looking at the total precipitation, we can see it wasn't as uniform a result. The image on the upper right uh, shows the total precipitation percentiles. We can see that rainfall was above average across the Victoria Crossroads and the northern coastal bend. We experienced near average rainfall across the coastal plains with below average rainfall across the southern coastal bend and throughout the brush country. And when comparing our three climate sites to our historical records, Corpus Christi came in with the 23rd warmest winter and the 50th wettest winter. Victoria recorded its 25th warmest and 11th wettest winter, while Laredo saw its 19th warmest and 28th wettest winter. So before I go into this slide, we'll take a second, in case you're not too familiar with our area, and I have labeled the different regions I'll be talking about throughout the presentation. So the, the Victoria Crossroads up here across the, the northern parts of our county warning area, with the coastal bend, the, the counties along the coast, coastal plains just a little bit further inland, the brush country out here across our western counties uh, along the Rio Grande, which is labeled here on the border of the U.S. and Mexico. So when looking at the 90-day rainfall departure from normal map, which is the image on the top, we can see that the majority of the region saw below normal rainfall over the last uh, 90 days, with the exception of a few pockets along the coast. Parts of northwest Webb County across the brush country was our driest area over the last three months. When going back and looking at the last 180 days, which is the bottom image here, we can see that above normal rainfall was reported across the southern coastal plains and across parts of the Victoria Crossroads, which is just where some of our heavy, heavier rainfall events occurred towards the end of last summer. Taking a quick peek at the drought monitor as of March 26, 2019, we can see that majority of the brush country, the coastal plains, and the Victoria Crossroads are currently abnormally dry or in moderate drought. There are portions of the northwest brush country that are currently experiencing severe drought. The good news, however, is that the U.S. Seasonal Drought Outlook from the Climate Prediction Center indicates that drought conditions will improve throughout the spring. Moving on to our 10 and 14 day outlooks from the Climate Prediction Center with the 6 to 10 day outlooks on the top row and the 8 to 14 day outlooks on the bottom row with temperature on the left column and precip on the right column we can see that we are expected to have fairly normal temps and above normal rainfall over the next 6 to 10 days with slightly above normal temps and above normal rainfall over the next two weeks. Looking at a bit of a longer time frame, the CPC expects us to have above normal temperatures and above normal rainfall across South Texas as we head into the summer months. These two images here show the three-month outlook with the temperature probability on the bottom image and the precipitation probability on the upper right. Switching gears to the El Nino Southern Oscillation Outlook, we are currently under an El Nino advisory per the Climate Prediction Center as weak El Nino conditions are present and are expected to continue through the summer months. Conditions strengthened across the equatorial Pacific in February as sea surface temperatures warm considerably. We can see on the time series here on the right that the sea surface temperature anomaly saw a drastic increase earlier this year. As a result, there has been a consistent pattern of anomalous convection and winds which led to the issuance of the El Nino advisory. Now taking a look at this bottom image, we can see several of the forecast models that go into predicting an El Nino, and the majority of them carry the El Nino conditions into the summer months. So to summarize and clarify this slide, the CPC has an 80% chance for El Nino conditions to continue this spring, a 60% chance it will continue into the summer, and only a 50% chance that El Nino will continue through the summer months mainly due to the fact that El Nino forecasts made in the spring tend to be less accurate. So to help make some connections between a typical South Texas spring and El Nino, I went back a few years and looked at all these springs since 1950 that we saw El Nino conditions. Since then, there have been 10 springs that we consider an El Nino spring. There have been some years where El Nino started in the late spring and went through the summer, but I did not include them during this study. So we looked at our three climate sites, Corpus Christi, Victoria, and Laredo, and we saw that typically during an El Nino spring, we are one to one and a half degrees cooler than normal. 
So it is worth noting that there have been a few El Nino springs where temperatures were above average and some were well above average, specifically the springs of 2015 and 1953. This next image here shows the CFS model or the climate forecast system model forecast for the next several months. It hints at a negative temperature anomaly across the brush country with around average temps for the rest of South Texas. Now this is just one of the many resources the CPC uses when making their climate outlooks, but many other factors are also considered. When looking at a rainfall potential during an El Nino spring, we can go back and look at how it performed during the previous 10 El Nino springs. So El Nino springs are just barely wetter than our average spring across South Texas. On average, we received just about half an inch more rainfall than we, than we typically would have, although we have had some very wet El Nino springs, specifically in 2015 and 2016. Now this does not mean we won't receive any heavy rainfall over the next couple of months. Previous research has shown that the largest spread from average rainfall during an El Nino spring occurs across the central and northeast parts of the state. South Texas typically doesn't see too much of a change during El Nino events. It is worth noting that the frequency of occurrence of this above average rainfall is about 50% or less across Texas. So taking another look at the CFS output, We'll look at the seasonal precipitation anomalies over the next few months. It indicates the largest anomalies over the coastal plains and a bit further north over central Texas. The anomalies are a bit smaller across the brush country and are near average along the southern coastal bend. So taking a quick look at our spring severe weather outlook, we'll look into some previous work done comparing tornado and hail frequencies during El Nino and La Nina influences. So the column on the left shows the El Nino influence and on the right we see the La Nina influence. Tornado frequencies are on the top row and hail frequency is on the bottom row. The purple coloring indicates a higher frequency while the orange shows a lower frequency. So typically during an El Nino spring we see a lower frequency of tornado and hail events across South Texas although there is an area along the southern coastal bend that does see a slightly higher amount of sphere weather during our El Nino springs. And we can see just by looking at this that there is a higher frequency of severe weather reports during a La Nina event compared to the El Nino. Taking a look at the spring flooding outlook, we can see from the image on the right that there is an increased risk of what we call extreme wet events during an El Nino spring, mainly across the brush country with a lesser chance further east. The Climate Prediction Center spring flood outlook, which is the bottom left image here, indicates that there is a greater than 50% chance of minor flooding across our northeastern areas which includes the Victoria Crossroads and the Northern Coastal Bend. You can also see that there is a greater than 50% chance of moderate flooding across the northeast portions of Texas. Looking even further north, there is a high chance of major flooding across the Midwest, some of which is currently ongoing as a result of snow melt this spring. All right, so let's turn our attention over to fire weather. We can take a quick look at the drought monitor again and see that abnormally dry to severe drought conditions are currently present across much of the region. The image on the bottom left depicts our calculated soil moisture levels. We can see that our soil moisture is a bit higher out east across the coastal bend towards the Victoria Crossroads, but as we look out towards the brush country, our soil moisture is a bit lower, which is leading to the current drought conditions. However, as previously mentioned, conditions are expected to improve this spring. So to wrap things up, temperatures are expected to be near or slightly above normal this spring, but we still could see brief periods of cooler temperatures. Remember that our average temperatures are not that much cooler during an El Nino spring. Now we are expecting higher than normal rainfall amounts this spring, and when combined with our slightly higher surface moisture, we could see an increase in our flooding events. As mentioned earlier, severe weather frequency is typically lower during an El Nino spring, so we are just expecting a near or slightly below average season. Just keep in mind that this does not mean that we won't see any severe weather and to always be prepared. Now we are expecting a slightly below normal fire weather season as a result of the above normal rainfall and the elevated soil moisture levels, mainly across our eastern areas, but brief periods of elevated to critical fire weather conditions will still exist at times. That will conclude our Spring 2016 Climate Outlook webinar. If anyone has any questions, feel free to shoot me an email at tyler.castillo at noaa.gov or give us a call anytime at 361-289. 0959. Thanks for watching and have a great day.